Welcome to r slash Petty Revenge, where we share stories of small victories over those who have wronged you. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. And today's first story is, I absolutely love people who pay with pennies. Seriously, four years ago I'm cashiering at a wacky mart on a register that holds all the smokes and alcohol. It's 10 p.m. and these two young men, early 20s, come up to the counter. They have three random novelty items. I don't remember what they were, but it was strange and unusual to get odd items this late at night. Maybe it was for some fraternity, I don't know. It's a college town, so I get weird stuff from frats a lot. I scan the items and tell them their total is 22XX. Grinning at each other, they reach into their jackets and slam down two-gallon Ziploc bags, full of only pennies. I stare them in the eye, but they didn't even look at me. Everyone else in line groans and went to other registers. These two kids knew what they were doing, but they didn't know what they were in for, because I prepared for this. I knew this was going to inevitably happen. I grinned with them, because I was going to get paid during this. These pranksters are here for recreation. This convo occurs between me, ringleader, the other guy was silent and awkward, and a friendly coworker of mine. Me, is this 22XX? Ringleader, uh, me, did you count it? Ringleader, nope. Me, are you going to? Ringleader, nope. Me, is it at least 22XX? Ringleader, I don't know. Me, nice. Coworker, hey, you guys can use the self-checkout. It can take all your coins at once. Me, oh, don't worry about it, coworker. Ringleader, nope, don't trust them, lady. Partner laughs. Coworker, what, why? Ringleader, doesn't count all your change right. Coworker, I've used them before. It really works. Me to coworker, I got this. I unpacked the Ziplocs and threw all the pennies on the counter. It was a beautiful, massive SH storm of a mess, and I digged in it. I was frank in a dumpster and it's always sunny. The two, still averting my gaze, start chuckling, as if they were taking away my dignity. They whisper to each other, dude, oh my god, dude, yeah, dude, hilarious. I counted each penny one by one. My coworker comes up to me. Coworker, guess I'll help you count this. Me, don't worry about it. She looks at me confused, then she puts on her get down to busy look. Coworker, I got your back. Me, oh, okay. We worked up a system where we counted 10, put them in a pile, then with 10 stacks of 10 pennies we separated them, making $1 piles. We made progress slowly but surely. Some customers came to the line, but we advised them to get to another line. Some of them looked at us confused, but when they saw the counter full of pennies they understood. Some decided to wait, but when they realized it wasn't going to take just a few minutes they took their leave. Another register in the liquor department opened, so it wasn't too bad for other customers. We get to about $12, about 10 minutes in, until I knocked over the piles. Coworker, neon tonsil, me, oops, sorry. Coworker looks at my grin. I give her a wink and tilt my head, motioning her to leave. Coworker, you know what? I think I better let you do this. Me, ha, huh, all right. Coworker leaves. I look at the two guys. They are absolutely stunned at the fallen piles of pennies. Me to ringleader. Yeah, I'm gonna have to count all of this again. Ringleader, okay. I started from zero. I count slower than ever and made my way back up. The duo is entirely silent. I get to about $7, when suddenly I say, me, drats, I lost count, I better start all over again. Ringleader, really? Me, oh yeah man. Ringleader, why? Me, I lost count sir, I could be in trouble if my register doesn't have the right amount of cash, and I don't want to rip you off. Ringleader, uh… It's about an hour later, my manager walks past, looks at me, I smile at him and he looks at the counter. He walks away without a word. I eventually count all the change, and surprisingly they had only $18. Me. Hmm, I think that this is $18. The duo has been dead silent. They look done for the night. Me. I'll recount it. I effing recounted it. Me. I think this is actually 19xx. Without a word, the ringleader whips out a $5 bill. Me. Seriously? You had cash? Ringleader. Needed to get rid of my change. Me. No problem. I'll just recount this again. I want to make perfectly sure that this is $19, since I counted $18 the first time. Ringleader. Are you kidding me? I shake my head no, completely serious. He takes out a $20 bill straight out of his pocket and throws it at me. My coworker gives the biggest what the F face. Internally, I die as well, because they were smart enough to have a backup plan, and the fact that he was touching his cash in his pocket the entire time kind of messed with me. I take the cash, do the transaction, give him his change, thanked him and wished him a good night. The two start to put their pennies back in the Ziploc bags, and I didn't help them at all. I watch them just as how they watch me. Lots of pennies dropped to the floor, but they didn't care to pick them up. It looked like their souls were sucked out of them. It was past midnight, and I clocked out way past when I was supposed to. A lot of my coworkers gave me a thumbs up or told me good night. Even my manager told me good job. The only two words he ever said to me. 
went to bed at the dorms after such a great petty penny night and crashed. Strange to say, but I'd love to count pennies again. The second story is how I may have cost a coworker her job. I work as a baker at a grocery store, and my department works closely with the deli. Now, when I say I'm a baker, I actually mean I'm the baker, and have about twice as much to take care of in nine hours than the woman who runs the deli. To clarify, neither of us are managers or even official team leaders, but she's been doing this for about five years, and while I've only been in this position for six months, I've more than doubled sales because quality and quantity have improved so much, making me the voice of authority in my area. We do, however, share a department manager and operate under two other high-tier managers. This weekend, we had health and safety inspections on her days off, and new girls training and running deli solo with me alone in the bakery. One of the store managers comes into bakery with the inspector following, do a thorough review of my bakery area, closed off from the rest of the store, so any problems in there are mine and mine alone, so I run a tight ship in there. And I'm actually commended for how clean and organized everything is. My portion of the visit is about 30 minutes, including the inspector asking to sample some new pastries, and of course you can have some. Would you like a few to take home to your family? Here's the ingredients list. Your wife can make them like this. You know, the whole kiss-a appeal to good nature because I've seen the deli and they're about to get reamed and I don't want to be associated with them. Before I go any further, I should mention the lead deli worker, LDW from here on, hates me. I have no issues on calling her out on her petty drama and stupid SH, but because I know what she's like, I take my issues directly to management. Well, two weeks ago, she came in on her day off and threatened to drag me out by my hair and kick the SH out of me, called me derogatory names, etc., because I talked to management about her threatening to make false claims against me for not covering a shift for her, cross-trained for her department. I immediately told management, they have video but no audio of the situation, and she's in serious trouble. My DM, who already hates her, basically tells her she gets one more chance to prove she's worth keeping. Ever since then, she's been nasty and turning coworkers against me because I don't get to interact with many people. I'm actually busy all day, unlike some people. Nobody wants our coworkers to lose their job, even managers don't want to fire people unless they're egregious, but it comes with a cost. When the bad ones are not fired, the good ones leave. It lowers morale and results in a race to the bottom. After all, the only people who can tolerate bad coworkers are the ones who themselves feel like they're stuck and don't have any other choice. Back to the story. So, Inspector leaves, and about an hour later, my DM, SM, and the Inspector come in and start asking questions about Delhi. Y'all, they found open sacks, empty personal containers, etc. in the Delhi kitchen, mixed in with Delhi food and containers. For anyone who works in a professional retailer industry kitchen, you know this is a huge no-no. Closed container of water kept outside the kitchen? Sure. I keep a bottle of water on a table outside of my bakery. But in the kitchen they found food, food containers, and uncapped bottles marked LDW. They're asking me questions. Our GM comes in and listens, and I explain all the dirty, disgusting habits LDW has and mention that she's likely taught them to the trainees. Then I get into the customer service issues and rat on how nasty she is with people the drama she causes between co-workers, and make a comment on how nice it must be to get paid for three hours you don't work because you're entitled to 60 to 30 minute smoke breaks throughout the day when you're older, right? Then I drop a comment about how pretty her hair always is, and it's no wonder she doesn't wear a hairnet in the deli. Y'all could have heard a pin drop with how silent it got. Even the inspector is looking off. Everyone but my DM leaves, and he asks me to clarify some facts for him, so I do. His lips pucker, his eyes narrow, and he starts cursing her in Spanish. He's furious that he was embarrassed during the inspection, and I apologize, but he corrects me and says it wasn't any issue with me, it was the state of the deli. We have a follow-up inspection coming up, and if the deli isn't in shape, it could get shut down. But LDW? So far, it looks like LDW is going to remain employed. However, she was being registered trained when I went up front, so at least the danger to the food is gone. For everyone concerned about the deli trainees, don't be. If they're worth their salt, they'll be open to being retrained on proper food safety and will keep their jobs. If not, well, it's not much of a loss. My manager asked me to continue to bring issues to his attention, which I'm happy to do and that's that. Not the dramatic she was escorted out and banned from the store ending that I was hoping for, but still a satisfying one nonetheless. Food areas pay a few bucks more than the other entry-level positions, so she took a pay cut, and I've heard her screaming at a few people already, so she won't last long either. And the last story is, ladies should only drink wine. About 10 years ago, I worked for a 40-something-year-old woman who was very old school when it came to etiquette and was very critical of other women who didn't adhere to her strict code. I'm talking things like my allergy to most makeup, even stuff for sensitive skin, was no excuse to not wear it, or wearing business slacks instead of a pencil skirt with a knee-length hemline and stockings was a big issue. Despite adhering to the company dress code, according to her, we weren't presentable. Mind you, this was in a job where the public never saw us and we didn't wear anything that showed what company we worked for. Whenever she'd criticize me or a coworker, she'd always start with, name, a young lady should never, then nitpick at whatever small infraction she perceived. Anyway, some coworkers and I went out for a few drinks at the bar restaurant next door to our office building on a Friday night. 
It was the end of my second to last week there, and my last day was the day of the office Christmas party, so we kinda had to do my going away drinks that night. My boss came in to have dinner with someone about an hour after we arrived. She came over to say hi, and saw me drinking a Magner's cider out of the bottle. Etra, she huffs, a young lady should never drink out of the bottle, and never beer. Ladies should only drink wine when having alcohol. After maybe five more minutes, she heads off to the restaurant. I usually let it slide when she criticized me, because I was at work and kinda had to, but telling me I shouldn't have something I really enjoy outside of work hours because it's unladylike, and should instead have something I hate because of what people might think of me really got to me. My coworkers and I start having a B session about her and her 60 year out of date mentality and I hatch a plan. I spent that weekend at my mom's place and asked her if she could help me pick out a bottle of wine for my boss as a Christmas present. Mom looks at me confused, I'd complained to her many times about my boss, till I explained I meant get a bottle from her collection not from the shop. Understanding dawns and we start perusing her wine collection. Now mom has a very large wine collection. It's all very old, was probably expensive at one point, but after being shaken up in moves all over Australia, kept in a non-air-conditioned room in Queensland for 12 years, and not being rotated, it's mostly just vinegar now. So she helps me pick out a red that looks like it should be very nice and fancy, and I give it to my boss on the following Friday at the Christmas party. She's very grateful and says, I'm glad I could teach you some manners, while I just keep a stiff smile plastered on my face. I never saw the fallout, but one of my old co-workers who I'm friends with on Facebook told me that she came into work fuming after the Christmas and New Year's break, and the first words out of her mouth were asking where I was. Apparently she'd opened the bottle on Christmas Eve and poured glasses for herself, her husband and her kids. All adults, so it's okay. They all said cheers, took big sips and promptly ran to the sink to spit it out. In the mad rush for the sink though, someone knocked the coffee table the bottle was standing on and spilt the red wine and vinegar onto the carpet. I didn't think she'd actually drink it, let alone have it ruin her carpet, and I actually felt bad about that. I know from experience how much of a pain in the A red wine is to get out a carpet after a bottle broke in mum's sideboard and it leaked out, ruining the carpet and seeping into the wood, which made the sideboard stink like booze for a year. I thought she'd open the bottle, realize something was off, then pour it down the sink or use it as cooking wine. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.